Hello and welcome to Australia in Space TV. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the executive editor with My Security Media and publishers of the Australia in Space magazine. Today we cross to Scotland and speak to Daniel Smith, who is the director of Space Scotland and also the founder of Astro Agency. We're going to have a look at Scotland's holistic approach to space sustainability and get some great insights into the Scottish space sector. So without further ado, Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith, uh, there in Scotland, the Director of Space Scotland and founder of Astro Agency. Thanks for joining us on Australia in Space. Thank you for having me. Very good. Um, now, you've written an article. We've got to, just coming to print the Australia in Space magazine, uh, and you've made a contribution to that, and you've been uh, liaising with our staff in London. Um, but we've had a little bit of uh, sort of coverage of, of the Scottish space industry and obviously the UK space industry and this should be linked I imagine to the UK and Australia space bridge so uh, it's very relevant to to our audience here in Australia um, yeah it introduces to we can go vi ver various ways here uh, but Space Scotland um, and your firm Astro Agency uh, is doing a lot and it really is quite enlightening when you start to read about what is happening in Scotland uh, with the space sector, right? They've, you've got launch capability and uh, launch locations and a range of different companies involved uh, in the sector. So, yeah, introduce us to, to Space Scotland and, and your key roles. Absolutely, sure. So Space Scotland was very much, and then still is, mainly a voluntary organisation, so it's sort of industry-led. And it was running for about five years, and I'd been part of it in other roles I'd had in the space sector. And I'd always quite like the way that around 70 organisations, space organisations in Scotland would come together, together with academic partners and also government too, and government ministers would join the meetings. But I liked how the companies would kind of leave their business cards at the door and it wasn't about your individual company, it was more about hey, what can we do together to, to raise the sector and, and to drive it forward and address challenges, but also, you know, um, work together on opportunities too. So it was very collaborative. So I always really liked it, and it used to just be the, the community meeting together, the space companies. We're very small in Scotland, of course. It's quite yep. quite easy to, to get people together, generally. Um, some of the space sports, it was always a bit more difficult. They had to travel further than the rest of us, but it was great just to see that effort that was made to come together. Um, so yeah, I, I always really liked it, and then there was, some, there was an opportunity through the UK Space Agency to start pulling together regional strategies, a little bit of funding that went along with that as well. So that was a great kind of catalyst for us saying, right, how do we take Space Scotland to the next level? Um, how do we really move it forward and actually get some resource behind it? So that, that led to us writing our first strategy, our inaugural space strategy for Scotland, which is really there to, to back up UK, wider UK ambitions and start to look at, you know, turning Space Scotland into a, a not-for-profit company, which we did, setting up a board of directors. We had our first uh, chair election as well. And um, yeah, we're now, we're now about to appoint an executive director for the organization too. So it's an exciting time. Um, and obviously there's a lot going on in the UK, but particularly in Scotland, which is interesting. You've got about 40 members and I take it, is it a little bit like an industry association, would you say? Yeah, it's probably the okay. closest analog that you'll find to it. Um, I'd say like industry led association, there's no membership fees, but it is very much a case of the industry coming up with the challenges or, or raising the opportunities. Then we set up these working groups um, so that so the meetings are about every quarter, but the working groups continue throughout, and that just allows us to get again voluntarily get companies and representatives from the space sector to come together and deal with certain um, you know issues. And and one was sustainability, so that was one that I set up with a colleague of mine from the University of Edinburgh. We called it the Environmental Task Force, and we looked uh, basically to try and figure out what could space do to contribute to net zero ambitions. You know, because it's not a sector that you'd normally associate with sustainability or environmental friendliness um, so it was a case of well how do we how do we change that and first of all how do we raise the the points the awareness and the and the good that space is doing for the environment talking about the downstream side of course satellite data and how it supports the environment but then how can we look at launch which is a big issue for the at the moment and five developing spaceports in scotland so how can we look at launch and figure out how we can maybe do that in a more environmentally conscious way and that's how, that's how it all kind of began. That was maybe three years ago. And that's how the sustainability journey certainly began. Because we are a small country and we realise that and we're not going to be a space, leading space nation necessarily, right? But if we can contribute in, in, in a couple of ways that make a difference, then we'll, we'll be pleased. And I think sustainability is one of them where we really can make a difference. 
Well, it happened to be the uh, sort of tag for the Global Space Week this year as well was space sustainability. So yes. I think you're on the money. Maybe just talk us through the launch sites in, in Scotland. There's about five, is that right, or launch yeah, that's companies? Great. Seven across the UK, five are based in Scotland, and a lot of that's down to geography where we're, we're quite fortunate. Um, but it's kind of the missing piece of the puzzle for, for the UK because, I mean, in Scotland, we already build more small satellites than anywhere in the world outside of, of the US with companies like Spire Global and Clyde Space, Alba Orbital. Um, so we've got that satellite manufacturing and manufacture, which people here aren't really even aware of, a lot of the you know, yeah. general public, for example. Um, and then we have the kind of thriving downstream data segment. A lot of that's based in Edinburgh, where we've got over 10 companies analyzing space data. So launch was kind of the, the missing piece, and obviously it's been a missing piece for Europe for some time. So we do have five developing spaceports, two of which are horizontal and three of which are vertical spaceports, and two major launch vehicle manufacturers as well that are based here um, in Orbex and Skyrora. And we also have companies like Lockheed Martin, uh, ABL, and uh, High Impulse from Germany that are also launch vehicle companies moving into Scotland with a view to to launching from from Scotland. So yeah, quite a lot happening around launch. And again, it's it feels because we're building it, you know, from scratch. It feels like an opportunity to try and do it in a way that's maybe different from other places around the world and building in that sustainability angle. Have you had any links to Australia at this stage in any of those companies or member partners? So, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the Space Bridge has definitely led to some conversations happening. I know my own company, Astro Agency, because Space Scotland is, is voluntary role, um, but, but my own organisation, Astro Agency, which focuses on space marketing globally and helps companies to get the word out on what they're doing and, and work on, on, their, on their marketing strategies. So we actually did a project with Austrade um, recently, which was great, and we worked with 11 different space companies in Australia. We supported them just to get a feel for the UK sector and the landscape. And then we brought them over to Farnborough, which was which was really great at the Farnborough Air Show in, in England, and we were able to do these kind of in-person introduction. So that was great. But in terms of Space Scotland, since releasing the roadmap, the sustainability roadmap we've been working on, I've been speaking with the Australian Space Agency, um, who have a person uh, who, who's, who's responsible for sustainability at the agency, which is great to see, and clearly it's a priority yeah. for Australia too. And there are some really interesting. Um, similarities um, in between what's going on in Australia and what's going on in Scotland and the wider UK. It does sound very similar in terms of focus uh, and building the industry. Um, yeah. Maybe something else in terms of Europe, because I understand the UK, there will be a launch very soon. Will we be the first launch uh, out of Europe? Um, yes. And, uh, and I still do class the UK as, as part of Europe. It's in that in that area, even though that you've uh, you've left uh technically but yeah what yeah. what's the uh sort of activities there around the launch and how you still relate back to europe and european space agency as, as well yeah so, so you're right it'll be the first uk launch um uk did build uh, a launch vehicle in the past in the 60s but of course it launched from australia it launched from yeah black arrow right, right? Yeah, and in my first role in the sector, we were involved in retrieving the first stage, which had landed in the desert, and bringing it back to, to the UK. I brought took it back to my hometown, actually, a small town in Scotland. Um, so yeah, Black Black Arrow. So we've got that a little bit of heritage, but of course, launch had never happened from the UK before, not not into orbit at least, and indeed from Europe. So Cornwall uh, in, in the south of England with Virgin Orbit are launching within the next few weeks. I think the window opens in the next couple of weeks. So that's an exciting time and you know i know the team there very well and they've worked extremely hard on it and it's great to see it because it's it really shows you know it will get the public excited and it will show the potential i think with horizontal launch it's basically you know a, an aircraft taking off so um i think it'll change a lot of people's perception on how how access to space can be achieved yeah and then places like Presswick spaceport in scotland will then take that baton and run with it you know with, with launches themselves in the next few years too so it's, yeah, it's it's an exciting time. Definitely, it's going to be a great end to the year, I think, for space in the UK. And what are what are some of the numbers around the the Scottish space sector in terms of growth? Is it is it growth, or are you still relatively a sort of um, you know in those early stages? How do you class yourself as an industry, and then how that relates to the UK space uh, sort of strategy and the agency there, and and how might, that might compare? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's an interesting one because we do. I always think of the Scottish space sector as being very much new space, completely commercial space, private space driven. But um, 
it's often pointed out to me rightly that, that actually, you know, we've been involved in research missions and kind of big space missions for, for, for many years. Um, you know, James Webb, who were heavily involved in James Webb with the MIDI instrument uh, that was built in, in Edinburgh, um, and, and also, you know, other other kind of the big space missions with companies in Dundee, like Star Dundee, and, and even Gore, uh, WL Gore, who have been, you know, they've been putting space cables and wires uh, into the moon, I believe, since since the 60s. So uh, there, there is that kind of that heritage there. But in terms of the new space sector, with the satellite manufacturer I've mentioned, and then obviously the launch development and the downstream, it, it, it's, it's a lot more new. So there's around 130 companies at the moment, we believe, that are um, you know working in space in Scotland. Um, universities, we've got our own academic forum where the universities come together to to focus on space, so a representative from each of the universities. We've got a Scottish Government Space Group as well, so it's that kind of collaborative triangle between yeah. industry, academia and government, which is really useful. And um, yeah, it was announced earlier this year that actually, despite having less than 10% of the UK population, more than 20% of space jobs in the UK are actually in Scotland. So right. very much you know, they're punching above our weight uh, to support that, that wider UK proposition. And are you finding that it's uplifting other sectors as well? Uh, and maybe another question comes to mind is uh, the skills uh, and, and obtaining the skills and workforce. Are you having issues there uh, at all or your observations there? Well, I think that the other sectors is a great point. I think that's an opportunity for us, really. I think it's still about getting the word out that the space sector is here and it's a great revenue stream for other sectors to be part of, whether that's supporting that supply chain to launch you know, whether it's the satellite side or, or components into that or or indeed the, the actual physical launch launch vehicles or, or spaceports um, or the insight that comes from space data you know i think there's still a lot of uh, awareness to be raised to get other sectors involved we are seeing it which is great uh, but i think there's still there's still a lot of work to be done there just to encourage other sectors to see it as a potential revenue stream or something that can boost their business um, and government too you know making sure government are aware of the benefits they can derive from space data uh, so yeah i think Definitely some some good work to be done there in the future, but things like the launch that's happening and, and the launches that will happen from Scotland next year will improve that. And the workforce and what yeah. what initiatives you're seeing uh, and where uh, Australia might take some learnings out or likewise uh, the observations elsewhere in terms yeah. of building and maintaining a workforce. Yeah, I think it's something that that we have to look at, you know, and, and we do we, we see some great educational outreach happening. Um, and I know that in Australia, there, there's, there's organisations doing a great job of that as well, uh, at Giant Leap and others. So we, we are seeing that in the UK, but sometimes it's a little bit disparate, a little bit spread around. And what we're trying to do now through Space Scotland is that kind of uh, central uh, organising um, group is to try and just make it a bit more focused, the outreach and identify with, with government agencies such as Skills Development Scotland what are the gaps of the future so we can start to not just raise awareness in space and get children excited and inspired which we should do and is very important but actually try and um make them aware of the, the exact skills that we're going to need in the yeah. future but that's a, that's a challenging exercise in itself you know and of course you've got to also think about the the equality and the diversity side to make sure we've got you know people from all different backgrounds not just genders but different um you know different social backgrounds as well, economic backgrounds, and making sure they realise that space is really for anybody now. Um, yeah. So that, there's a lot of work being done there. We just launched an EDI uh, guidance pack as well for all of our membership, uh, looking at equality, inclusivity, and diversity too. So just trying right. to make sure that we're, there's no blockers in the in that kind of pipeline. But yeah, very, very important. We're working on a project just now with Presswick Spaceport um, on the Astro Agency side where we're creating a short film and we're interviewing people that are from Scotland that have gone on to do great things in the space sector. And we've been speaking to head teachers across the, the area of Ayrshire to make sure we can get that shown in some schools, which would be really exciting. So yeah, awesome. it's, it's very important. When I started out in the sector, I was working for a launch vehicle company in, in Scotland about six years ago, and it was difficult to find components, to find you know the, 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 the supply chain for, for the rocket. I think it's a lot easier now. I think things are improving and a lot of engineering companies and from oil and gas and renewables are seeing the opportunity in space, but there's still some way to go. And maybe that just brings us back to Astro Agency as well. What What is the marketing difference, I suppose, for the space sector and space companies? Is it different from sort of a traditional marketing approach or do you just love space and thought, okay, well, I'll just do the marketing business around uh, space sector? 
a little bit of both. I think coming from the sector, I could see the potential and I could see what was missing. And there was definitely a gap. There is probably still a gap around around that. You know, we're trying to do what we can in the UK and Europe. We have some clients in, in the US and Canada. And I've mentioned the Australian government work we've done. But we're trying to, to grow further. But yeah, um, I'd say it's quite different. There's obviously the technical angle. So the first thing I did was I hired a CTO and, and he built out a technical team. Because I, although my my my, sorry, my background was in launch vehicles, um, I, I wasn't going to be that strong when it comes to when it comes to people asking about space data. So when I had you know SAR companies or or I mean infrared companies that are doing incredible things, you know, uh, when they were looking for for target audiences and looking for marketing, I realised that's something I wasn't quite as as clued up on. So I knew I needed that technical team, people from remote sensing, but also people from launch or people from space courts. Um, and, and, and you know avionics and all sorts because you know it's such a great opportunity not just for space companies to market themselves but for companies that are interested in the sector to move in and that takes messaging that takes a lot of uh, kind of target audience realization and, and figuring out you know how do you reach those target audiences and of course it's very different from a rocket company who want to get the word out to maybe investors a downstream company who wants to reach insurance or agriculture uh, you know industries so it's, it's it's a good challenge and, and, and obviously you can use tools like pr or social media events or so many space events that's yeah. what we do to, try and to help the, the clients that, that are out there um, and of course there's the politics of space and there's all the regulations you know there's uh, from itar to mtcr uh, and all the kind of politics with a big p and a small p when it comes to space it is a small sector um, but if you're not, if you don't know the nuances, I think it, you can probably cause some issues, and it's not what you want to do in the space industry. It's a, a very global uh, sector as well, isn't it? It's a global business. Yeah, yeah, for sure, exactly. And, and everybody's kind of offering different things, and there's opportunities for collaboration everywhere. So yeah. the more you know about, the more you kind of come from the sector, I think it makes it easier to work with companies and share introductions and connections as well. You know, which is kind of like a bonus thing you can do, but. You almost become a business development agency at that point because you're not just mapping out what the you know the client could be could who they could be selling to you're able to say actually but i know someone from that company because it's such a small industry um you know around the world that you can make those introductions to wonderful well it's uh, also able to jump on a uh, on a call like this and cross the world instantly uh does make it uh well worthwhile so daniel smith director of space scotland and uh, founder of the astro agency uh, and with his article latest in the Australia in Space magazine. Pleasure to meet you and speak with you. And thank you very much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thanks very much.